the peninsular plateau this is the oldest physiographic division of india which is made up of rocks of volcanic origin the peninsular plateau almost covers the indian peninsula entirely this triangle shaped raised table land has its base towards the north along the northern plains it tapers southwards and has the apex at kanyakumari the northern boundary is irregular and stretches from kutch along the western edge of the aravalli range up to delhi further it extends almost parallel to rivers yamuna and ganga up to the ganga yamuna confluence the vindhyas satpura mahadeo maikal sarguja ranges separate it from the northern plains it is bounded by the western ghats towards its west and towards east by the eastern ghats the igneous mass of rocks is made up of several large and small plateaus which have broad and rounded summits the narmada river that flows westwards is a fault divides the plateau into two parts the northern smaller division is known as the central highlands the larger division that lies to the south is called the deccan plateau the central highlands the comparatively smaller northern portion of the peninsula plateau slopes towards north the rivers that flow northwards and join ganga as its tributaries are chambal son kali sindh parvati damodar ken betwa etc this elevated region of central india is divided into some smaller plateaus moving from west to east these subdivisions of the central highlands include several small plateaus bordered by the aravalli plateau in the northwest the east of the aravalli is the malwa plateau which has the vindhya range towards its south to the east of the malwa plateau are the bundelkhand and the bhaghel khand uplands these uplands are separated from the chota nagpur plateau by the kaimur maikal range along with the vindhya range the satpuras form the southern boundary of the central highlands the deccan plateau it is the triangle shaped plateau that lies to the south of narmada and its larger portion of the peninsular plateau it has its borders marked by the western ghats in the west and eastern ghats towards its east the general slope of the plateau is from west to east rivers like mahanadi godavari krishna and kaveri which originate in the western ghats meet the bay of bengal after dissecting the plateau from west to east like the central highlands the deccan plateau has also been divided into smaller subdivisions like the maharashtra plateau in maharashtra telangana plateau in andhra pradesh the karnataka plateau in karnataka the southern tip of the deccan plateau is marked by the nilgiri annamalai and kartamon hills the western ghats these lie on the western edge of the deccan plateau and stretch from river tapi to kanyakumari they lie about 50 to 60 meters away from the coast average height of western ghats may reach as high as 2440 meters and ranges up to 1200 meters at some points there are steep sided valleys narrow gorges and some waterfalls that lie in these ghats the ghats are also known as the sahyadri the important peaks of the western ghats include kal subai 1646 meters and salhar 1567 meters the few passes in the western ghats like the palghat gap are the points of communication connecting the plateau to the coastal plains the eastern ghats unlike the western ghats the eastern ghats are not continuous they are divided into blocks by several east flowing rivers like the mahanadi godavari krishna kaveri etc bordering the plateau on the eastern side they extend from the mahanadi up to the nilgiri hills but disappear between the rivers godavari and krishna significance of the peninsular plateau 
The plateau region is rich in a variety of mineral resources, reserves of iron, ore, coal, manganese, copper, mica, etc. spread all over the region. The northwestern plateau region, which is rich in iron, supports the growth of cotton. The region is also suitable for the cultivation of tea, coffee, rubber, coconut and other variety of crops. The swift flowing rivers which cross the entire plateaus from west to east have several waterfalls. These rivers are ideal for the generation of hydroelectricity. The Coastal Plains As the name suggests, the coastal plains are the plains that border the coastal areas along the Arabian Sea and the Bay of Bengal. Lying to the east and west of the triangular peninsular plateau, these plains meet at the southern tip of India. Owing to their location, the coastal plains have been divided into two physical subdivisions, the western coastal plain and the eastern coastal plain. The western coastal plain these plains lie along the coast of Arabian Sea. They are bounded by the Western Ghats to the east. They extend from the Kutch region in Gujarat up to Kanyakumari in the south. The average width of these plains is approximately 65 kilometers. The coastal areas are divided into three regions from north to south, namely the Konkan coast, the Kanara coast and the Malabar coast. The western coastal plains have a number of lagoons and backwaters, kayals, like the Vembanad. The eastern coastal plains. These plains extend from the mouth of the Ganga up to the Kanyakumari along the Bay of Bengal. They are also divided into two subdivisions. The northern part is known as the Northern Sirkars and the southern is called the Koromandal Coast. The eastern coastal plains are broader than the western coastal plains at several places. These plains have several deltas formed by the peninsular rivers like Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri, etc. Significance of the coastal plains The fertile coastal plains are suitable for the cultivation of crops like rice, coconut, several spices, palms, etc. There are only a few natural harbours along the coast as the coastline is not much indented. The backwaters and lagoons are helpful in the development of fishing activities. Manufacturing of salt is an important economic activity in the western coastal plains. Island Groups The two groups of islands that lie in the adjoining seas are a part of India. These include the Lakshadweep Islands, in the Arabian Sea and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands in the Bay of Bengal. Lakshadweep The Lakshadweep lie in Arabian Sea opposite to the Malabar coast, about 320 kilometers from the coast of Kerala. These small but numerous islands are the coral islands made up of the skeletal remains of the coral polyps. Several islands that belong to this group are in the form of rings which are called atolls. Lakadive, Minikoi and Amindivi form the Lakshadweep Islands. Andaman and Nicobar Islands The arc of the islands in the Bay of Bengal is formed by the North, Middle and South Andaman and Nicobar Islands. These are supposed to be the part of an extended fold mountain chain submerged underwater. Some of these islands are also volcanic in origin. The only active volcano in India is located on the barren island which belongs to this group. The islands of the Andaman and the Nicobar group are bigger than those belonging to the Lakshadweep Islands. Indira Point, which is the southernmost point of India, lies in these islands. <laughs>